train wheel weighs several tons, yet it rolls over steel rails with astonishing grace. For decades, a single rail stretching 330 feet and weighing more than 13,000 pounds can endure tens of thousands of heavy loads without warping or fracturing. It's one of those marvels of modern engineering we rarely notice, so ordinary to the eye, yet so extraordinary in performance. Each rail must remain straight, strong, and precise for decades, channeling enormous pressure through a shape designed down to the millimeter. If you enjoy discovering how raw materials are transformed into the foundations of modern life, remember to like this video and subscribe. It helps more people find these deep dive industrial stories and keeps them in circulation just like the rails we depend on. The rails story begins far beneath the ground where iron ore lies trapped within the Earth's crust. To reach it, open pit mines sprawl across entire valleys. Massive terraced craters where mechanical giants carve into stone. Towering drills bore deep, measured holes into the rock which are packed with explosives and fired in synchronized bursts that fracture thousands of tons of material without destroying the ore inside. When the dust settles, fleets of haul trucks the size of small houses descend into the pit, each capable of lifting 300 tons of broken rock in a single trip. The machines work around the clock, crawling up steep grades under clouds of dust, carrying the building blocks of steel toward the surface. From the mine, the ore is delivered to crushing plants, where enormous steel jaws and rotary mills grind it down into fragments small enough to melt evenly. The rhythmic pounding of metal against rock fills the air as conveyor belts move an unending river of raw material toward the next stage. Every particle size is precisely calculated, too coarse and it resists melting, too fine and it destabilizes the mixture. Achieving the right balance ensures that the furnace will burn clean and hot, yielding steel strong enough to carry trains for generations. Once ground to uniform granules, the ore is mixed with coke, a carbon-rich fuel refined from coal, and fluxes like limestone that help draw out impurities later in the process. In massive rotating drums, mechanical paddles churn the blend until it becomes a perfectly even mix of metallic and carbonaceous material. Though simple in appearance, this mixture represents a delicate equilibrium of chemistry. Every handful contains the exact proportions of elements that, when subjected to fire and pressure, will form one of the toughest materials ever engineered by humankind. Inside blast furnaces and electric arc furnaces, this balance is pushed to its limit. Temperatures soar beyond 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit, liquefying ore and coke into glowing molten iron. Coke provides both energy and carbon, reacting with oxygen to strip the ore down to its metallic essence, while the flux rises to the surface as slag, carrying away the waste. Robotic arms skim off this floating layer as digital spectrometers continuously analyze the molten stream, verifying the chemistry in real time. When the readings stabilize, alloying elements, manganese for toughness, chromium for wear resistance, are added in precise quantities, transforming the melt into a steel suited specifically for rails. The sight inside a steel mill is unforgettable. Molten metal cascades from furnace spouts in radiant rivers, illuminating the factory walls with orange light. Sparks burst like fireworks as operators, shielded in reflective gear, guide the flow into enormous ladles. A single furnace can produce over 150 tons of steel in under an hour. Every pore must be flawless. Even a minor imbalance of carbon or temperature could compromise the strength that railways depend upon. The steel industry's scale is staggering. Globally, more than 2 billion tons of crude steel are produced every year. A significant portion is devoted to rail systems that span continents, carrying everything from grain and coal to commuters and cargo. In the United States alone, more than 140,000 miles of active track rely on these precision-made beams. Each one must meet microscopic tolerances, measured and tested, until it can endure 20 years of continuous load without failure. Yet beneath that industrial magnitude lies an environmental cost. Steelmaking emits nearly 7% of global CO2 output, rivaling the aviation sector. To meet both demand and responsibility, modern mills are experimenting with hydrogen-based reduction and closed-loop energy recovery systems that recycle exhaust heat back into the process. Innovation is reshaping even this ancient craft, ensuring that the world's infrastructure can keep growing without pushing the planet beyond its limits. From rock to molten metal, from raw chemistry to engineered precision, the making of steel rails represents one of humanity's most refined achievements. A fusion of physics, metallurgy, and endurance where fire meets control 
Once the molten steel reaches its exact temperature and chemistry, the furnace doors open and a brilliant orange stream of liquid metal pours into enormous ladles. Each one holds more than 150 tons, glowing so intensely it paints the entire foundry in shades of gold and red. The steel is still alive, rolling, rippling, and radiating heat that can be felt from dozens of feet away. It's immediately sent to the continuous casting area, where the liquid begins its first transformation from raw energy into solid form. The molten stream flows into open molds lined with copper and cooled by circulating water. Within seconds, the outer surface begins to solidify, forming a shell while the core remains fluid. The metal slowly descends through the mold, cooling layer by layer until it emerges as a long rectangular bar known as a billet. Even at this stage, every detail matters. Sensors track temperature across the billet's entire length, ensuring that solidification happens evenly. If any area cools too quickly, internal cracks or hidden voids could form, imperfections that would later cause a rail to fail under stress. The billets emerge glowing orange, hot enough to shimmer in the air, and are carried by rolling conveyors toward the reheating furnaces. Though they're already scorching, the structure of the metal must be stabilized before shaping begins. Inside these massive chambers, flames roar while computer systems monitor temperature zones within a few degrees of tolerance. The goal is to achieve a uniform heat profile throughout the billet, soft enough to deform under pressure, yet solid enough to retain structure. The process takes minutes, but its precision determines the entire quality of the rail that will follow. Once ready, the billets move onto the rolling line, a sequence of mechanical giants stretching hundreds of feet long. The first rollers are heavy and smooth, built to flatten and elongate the billet while reducing its thickness by half. As the metal passes through, it flows like clay under pressure, stretching out into a glowing strip. Tremendous force squeezes it between steel cylinders, each weighing several tons while the rhythmic pounding of machinery echoes through the building like thunder. Further down the line, the rollers become increasingly specialized. They're no longer smooth, but carved with precise grooves that begin shaping the rail's familiar profile. At this point, the cross-section slowly takes on the distinct I-form. Head on top, web in the middle, and base at the bottom. This geometry, perfected over a century of experimentation, balances strength, flexibility, and weight, allowing the rail to carry thousands of tons without distortion. Between each set of rollers, high-pressure water jets blast the steel's surface, stripping away layers of oxide that form under the intense heat. Steam explodes in great white clouds as the surface cleans itself, leaving the metal polished and flawless. At the same time, laser scanners and optical sensors track the rail's dimensions with millimeter accuracy. The readings feed into a control center that automatically adjusts roller speed and spacing to maintain perfect geometry. In this environment, a deviation of even 0.1 millimeter is enough to trigger recalibration. The rhythmic cycle continues, pressure, stretch, cool, and refine. The rail becomes longer, sleeker, more defined with each pass. Sparks scatter like rain as the glowing length moves forward, now hundreds of feet long and taking on the exact proportions that will allow trains to travel safely for decades. At the final rolling stand, grooved rollers carve the last delicate contours of the head and foot, producing a mirror-smooth surface. The air smells faintly of ozone and hot metal as water vapor rises in dense clouds around the newly shaped steel. All along the production line, automated inspection cameras capture thousands of images every second. Artificial intelligence compares each image to a digital model, flagging even the tiniest deviation. If the software detects a defect, an air bubble, an uneven edge, or a microscopic crease, the section is marked for removal before it ever leaves the mill. Precision here is absolute. These rails will carry lives, freight, and economies on their shoulders. By the time the rail leaves the last roller, it's no longer a billet, but a finished beam. Long, sleek, and impossibly strong. It glows with residual heat, its surface shining like liquid glass, as it glides down the conveyor toward the cooling and heat treatment area. There, the real test of endurance begins where the steel's inner structure will be transformed into the resilient backbone of global railways. As the glowing steel rails leave the rolling mill, their temperature remains high enough to distort under their own weight. Cooling must begin immediately, but not too quickly. Each rail enters a carefully calibrated cooling line where rows of nozzles spray high-pressure water in perfectly timed pulses. The jets wrap the surface in dense mist, 
hissing as they touch the 1,400 degree steel. Every droplet that lands removes just enough heat to control the metal's transformation without introducing stress. It's a delicate balance. Cool, too fast, and the rail cracks. Cool, too slowly, and, and it loses the hardness needed to bear millions of tons. Once surface temperature stabilizes, the rails move into massive heat treatment furnaces. Inside, the steel is reheated and cooled again in stages, a process known as quenching and tempering. Here, its internal structure changes from brittle to resilient, aligning microscopic grains so that the metal can bend slightly without breaking. Engineers monitor the process through infrared sensors and computer-controlled gas burners, making micro-adjustments to maintain even temperature along the full length. Every second matters. By the time the rail exits the furnace, it carries the signature combination of strength and elasticity that defines modern railway steel. Still glowing faintly red, the finished rails advance toward the welding line. Each section must be joined end-to-end -to, -end to form the continuous tracks used on high-speed and heavy freight networks. Automated rollers guide the rails together until their ends meet within a fraction of a millimeter. Electric arc welders flash like lightning, melting the steel faces while hydraulic presses squeeze them into one seamless bond. Within moments, the joint solidifies. So strong, it's nearly indistinguishable from the rest of the rail. Robotic grinders then glide over the surface, smoothing away excess material until the connection feels like a single, unbroken length of metal. Next comes the precision inspection phase. Optical scanners and X-ray systems sweep across each rail, revealing microscopic defects invisible to the human eye. Ultrasound transducers penetrate deep into the core, searching for trapped gases or tiny fractures. In adjoining labs, technicians test random samples by bending, compressing, and striking them with calibrated hammers. Machines record the exact amount of force each piece can withstand before deformation. Only the rails that meet every specification earn a certification mark, a stamp of endurance proving they're ready for service. The approved rails are stacked onto long flatbed trailers and hauled to rail yards or directly to construction sites. Cranes lift them carefully into place while survey crews align them with laser levels and digital gauges. Each connection must be straight within fractions of an inch to ensure smooth, vibration-free travel. Workers tighten bolts, weld joints, and secure clips in a synchronized rhythm honed by years of practice. When the final section is locked in, the result is a line of steel stretching across the horizon, silent, flawless, and strong enough to carry the combined weight of nations in motion. From a raw fragment of rock deep beneath the earth to a gleaming rail supporting high-speed trains, every step is a convergence of chemistry, precision, and human mastery. Inside each length of steel lies the memory of fire, pressure, and motion a material born in the heart of the planet and refined by ingenuity until it can bear the load of civilization itself. If this journey changed how you see the world beneath the train's wheels, give this video a like and subscribe to keep exploring the monumental processes that build the modern world. Every click helps others discover how ordinary materials become extraordinary achievements.